Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 of the TW2020 Super Act 64 series here on the channel. That is Super Explosion for this episode and for this tour. The Super Explosion tour kicks off with the Junior Heavyweight title matchup as we already have it booked here. As far as Eddie Guerrero, Nuki Sano, the rematch after Nuki Sano, of course, cashed in his Six Leaf Clover and got the Junior Heavyweight title after a incredible performance from Eddie Guerrero with him and Ultimo Dragon. Which was, of course, at the Best Super Junior uh, Finals. But, man, this is a hell of a opportunity for Eddie Guerrero to get the belt back. And not even... I don't even think it's been a week. Uh, let's, let's see. In the game here, has it, it, it has been officially a week in one day. And Eddie has a chance to be the Javoy champion for the third time. <laughs> there has only been one successful defense... In the year 2001 and 2002, throughout the entire reigns there, that is thanks to Fire Pro. <laughs> so all that comes down to, but for Eddie, he's got a chance to kick off the uh, the tour here. Uh, as far as the uh, final show, what it's looking like, the of course the final uh, Super Explosion show, because there's four nights as far as tour shows, and then the final show there for day five. As, uh, as far as we'll bring that up, actually. Uh, let's see. Um, actually, I was thinking about doing a motivational speech for this, but I think we're going to save that. Uh, so, the final show, which you see Eddie will win tonight. So, he will, in fact, be the champion for the third time. A crazy little bait and switch there. But I feel like that's kind of for the best. Don't think Nuki Sano needs to have a long reign. And uh, for Eddie Guerrero and Super Astro, they had a really, really good matchup at the Best Super Junior. So this should be a hell of a main event. Go main event, though. Blonde Bombers versus Koji uh, Kanemoto and Seoshi Kikuchi. We'll see how they do in their Junior Boy Tag Team title matchup. Well, so, you know, since we're doing, uh, you know, Super Astro versus Eddie Guerrero, I felt like we needed a radical revolution as far as then against the Cosmic Dragon Kings. As far as that's, uh, that's going to be a hell of a tag matchup. Also going to have Jusha Thunder Liger and the Great Sasuke versus Lords of the Deep. This is a, uh, as far as a number one contendership matchup for the tag team titles. So we'll be seeing that there as far as on the card as well. Los Bravano versus Dark Side Defiance in the eight-man tag. Uh, which we're going to see a trios matchup, which uh, I think you guys saw there as far as on night one between these two teams. So as far as basically that same matchup you're seeing here on night one. But we're adding two more people to that matchup. And then Dr. Wagner Jr. versus Skyda to open up the show. Uh, two great uh, technical luchador wrestlers as far as battling it out there as uh, yeah i mean it felt like um because we've never done this before i'm really excited to see how this plays out because they're, they're great technically and we'll see how that plays out when we get there we also gotta help uh put over some people morale wise it's crazy we have so many people on this roster 77 people insane uh but as far as yeah we're already booked ready to go let's run this first show as Bobby Fulton and Jackie Fulton of the Fantastics losing here to the Lynn Sanity team of Sean Waltman and Jerry Lynn as uh, Lynn with the cradle pile driver over Jackie Fulton. So at least he outperformed Jackie Fulton, but yeah, Sean Waltman, brutal. As he was exhausted by the end of this matchup. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. So they have a cracked sternum for Rob Van Dam here as uh, they take on three count, which Van Dam wins with five star frog splash over Shane Helms. Which, yeah, cracking a sternum on the five star frog splash definitely makes sense. And so he was really off his game, too, which is crazy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, they both still outperformed uh, Shannon Moore and Shane Helms. They, of course, have the tag team specialist bonus, which is crazy. Shows you how long they've been teaming here in this save. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and Lance Storm looking good out there. As far as gets the uh, victory, does the Can-Am Junior Express. Then uh, Dean Malinga, Wild Pegasus, beating Kazuya Yamasaki and Tiger Mask 4. So, again, since we're main eventing with... Uh, Nuki Sano and Eddie Guerrero, I felt like this is a good little, you know, card, uh, match to have on the mid-card of the, uh, of the card. But, uh, Demon Link Wild Pegasus beating Takamas 4 and Kazuya Yamasaki. Wild Pegasus getting the victory with a Wild Bomb in 941. Great performance, obviously, in Radical Revolution. Not so much for Kazuya Yamasaki and Takamas 4, which Yamasaki's now worse than Takamas 4. Pretty crazy. As uh, the Los Bavano, Dark Side Defiance, six-man matchup, the trios matches. Dark Side Defiance gets the win with uh, Tataru, pinning Damien with the Tataru Driller. As a great win for Dark Side Defiance, even though it was definitely an upset. Shima and Tataru in the 50s. And Dark Side Hayabusa gets outperformed by literally everybody on the Los Bavano team. Shout out Los Bavano. You know, had to lose here. 
Hayabusa is really riding a great kind of wave of momentum since he's came back, you know, with the heel turn, uh, being the kind of the new soul leader, really, of Dark Side Defiance. Because you could say it's mainly like a co-leadership with him and Jensei Shinzaki. And yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a good match, though. It's a good match there for Dark Side Defiance and uh, Los Pavano. Now, our main event is at the 80, because we knew, you know, it wasn't going to be a great match. And we knew we wanted to get the belt off Nuki Sano after, you know, cashed in. So I think a lot of people probably would not have saw it coming as, as well. We wanted to kind of pull a fast one on uh, on the people as uh, Eddie Guerrero gets the win though in 2043, and now back again is the Junior Void Champion with the exciting cash in. We have the follow up match where it's a straight up you know one v one matchup. So we, you know as far as since he obviously was screwed out of a title, uh, you know as Eddie there, so we just felt like we needed to immediately see a one-on-one -on -one match and yeah i mean sure having an 80 title matchup does it probably hurt the prestige of that junior boy title uh, probably but we knew that it wasn't going to perform at a high level probably on the final show so instead of waiting for the rematch to do it on the final show why not do it here on the first night have it be an exciting little main event for a tour show which I, you, know, I, you know, that would be pretty wild to have a Junior Void title chain chains at a tour show where it's not even, like, on pay-per-view or anything. But, I feel like it's a great way of kind of drawing people in. It's kind of like, you know, having a title change on a house show. You know, where you want people to be like, hey, you're, you never know what you're going to see when you, you know, buy a ticket for a Supermax 64 show. You might see a title change on a tour show. So, exciting stuff there as far as to have a new champion to get back as the champion is Eddie Guerrero. And now, we'll go on to night two, with Eddie back at the top of the helm. And now we build towards the Super Astro match. And we build towards, as far as for, uh, you know, the, the Blonde Bombers and Koji Kanemoto. I believe it's going to be on night three. We're going to have uh, two singles matches between those uh, four men. That's going to be fun to see how those play out. And yeah, on to night two. We go. Alrighty, night two. We have a shootover. versus Radical Revolution. A little fallout from the obviously previous night. As uh, the Radical Revolution, of course, get the win here as well. As uh, Nuki Sano at least did well, but uh, everybody else in the matchup, besides obviously Radical Revolution, uh, didn't do so hot. As uh, we see Dimalenko getting the submission victory over Tiger Mask 4. Probably should have had a Bikuzu Yamasaki looking back, but that's a good, some good got to show up to a strong start, though. So, a decent little opener. And then a 61 for the Pure Temple of Shigoku and uh, the three and three count. As uh, actually, this match was supposed to be the KM uh, Super. I guess uh, the KM crew, as far as with uh, Pillman, Landstorm, and Rob Van Dam. But of course, with Rob's injury, had to cut that. And uh, Johnny Young now added in the Pure Temple of Shigoku, which uh, Sinchi, though, did better than Alex Wright, which is crazy, because obviously he's just started with us just a couple of, of months ago. Manor Fujita with a 60, uh, best guy in the match, uh, which is really no surprise. I figured he would be. That's why he gets the win here with the Scoop Brain, uh, brain Buster over Alex Wright. But, uh, you know, for and listen, I know it's a 61, but for guys that are not really focused, obviously, on the higher part of the card and, and guys that, you know, like Sinchi and who have uh, just started with us, not bad at all. Not bad. A 61, we'll take that. It's an undercard match. It's what we were hoping for. And then Brian, too much Lawler and Scotty Tuhati taken on... The TTS team, Manoa Tanaka, Kiyoshi Tamora. Tamora gets the submission victory. Not a bad little uh, teaming for Tamora and Tanaka. I'm just glad don't, there's not like any negative chemistry or anything. Uh, Richard is going to be Funaki, but with his broken forearm, I feel like we could give him some rest. So that's why we went with that. And uh, So we go from a trios to a tag match between Los Pavano and Darkseid Defiance. As uh, Los Pavano will get the win here. It's Damian with the marionette over... Taru in 1931, which a great performance from Vampiro there with a 90. 76 is for both Hayabusa and Damien and Taru the 53. So, even though they had excellent chemistry, the much worse team, you know, there for Dark Side De uh, Defiance. In our uh, main event, boy, uh, yeah, I wanted this match obviously for a long, long time. Obviously, two men that are no strangers to each other. Of course, uh, you know, the ECW match uh, with the Hurricane, with the Hurricane Rana off the fucking car. Um, with, and, and just, they always, you know, it's weird because they had good matches, obviously. But obviously, when, when people think of Rey Mysterio Jr., they think of the 
Seacoast matches. They think of the Eddie matches. But him and Hoovy had some good matches, too. Uh, it's weird. Because, uh, obviously, the ECW match is very much um, a bright spot uh, of that. But, like, the matches they had in AAA in, like, 95, 94 um, are, are crazy. Uh, that was for... I, I know one of them was a WAA or WWA. I forget, uh, I forget the initials off the top of my head, but it was a cruiserweight title matchup. That's like crazy to think of. Like obviously the time in like 1995, uh, where wrestling was uh, kind of around the world. About how young those guys were, you know. Um, I think both of them were not even like 25. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure Hoovy was like 19 or 20, and Ray was around the same age, like 21, 20. It's just crazy uh, looking back. But yeah, Ray, Ray Jr. gets the win here, which, yeah, Hoovy, you know, he's had his stints in rehabs. He, in rehabs, this is multiple uh, rehab stints, but um, Hoovy also didn't do well as well as far as um, stamina wise. So just all around, not a great performance for him. This was all on Ray Mysterio, and he did great, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the show. Is it a bit of a swing and a miss? A little bit, but it's a tour show, so we can take these kind of risks like that. Uh, normally, I would not have that be like a main event or anything, but I wanted to see it. Felt like Ray could do a good enough performance to carry it, at least in the 70s, but who was just so bad that it just couldn't happen. But uh, we're already down at least halfway through the tour, already here from days one and two, so now on to day three, we go. Alrighty, uh, night three starts off with Otani and Kyoshi Damore against the mess of Chi and Ogawa. Again, this probably would have been Minoru Tanaka and Shunichi Funaki, but of course, you know, again, we want Tanaka and, uh, or at least, you know, we already used Tanaka, so we already used him this tour. Now, Tamora, I feel like we could use him with both Otani and, obviously, Minoru Tanaka, because Tanaka and Otani, they don't have good chemistry, so he's just kind of the man who's... Uh, filling in the void for, for Funaki as we let him kind of rest up. But, um, I mean, it's a good match. It was a good little opener um, for what we wanted. You know, 76, we'll take it. As Otani with the springboard drop kick over Yoshinaru Agawa. So Otani did outperform him. Uh, overall, that was, it was an upset. Uh, Fuchi and Ogawa were the better team. Tough break for the Holy Demon Army team there. As a 66 for Lords of Z versus the Warclass A-Holes as uh, Naniwa getting the win with the Driver de Naniwa over Jado. That was a tough one because Dick Togo probably should have took the loss there or Gato even. Uh, Jado was the best guy for his team. Almost outperformed Naniwa, which is kind of crazy. But um, it was wild. Uh, they w they actually were the better team, the World Class A also. So shout out Jado, Gato, and, and Dick Togo. I mean, they are uh, they're getting after it. And, you know, sure, they've been around for a while and they haven't really climbed up the rankings as much as I would have hoped. But they're doing well. Uh, they're they're doing really well as an undercard act, and uh, that's that's a good win for them. Seventy four for Los Guerreros and uh, Super Astro and Dragon Kid. Yeah, Super Astro gets one of the Astro Scissors in ten twenty three. So Eddie and Super Astro seventy eight, fifty eight for Dragon Kid, forty four for Chavo Junior. Uh, you know both Eddie and Chavo are off their game, so. Not great. Uh, they get outperformed, so I'm, I'm glad they, they took the loss. But yeah, as we build up to the Eddie Guerrero Super Astro match, that little tag matchup. And a 78 here for Koji Kanemoto and Chris Candido. As, uh, Kanemoto beats Candido with the Koji Clutch in 1931 as the co-main event. And then our main event, of course, will be the other side of that equation with uh, with uh, Chris Jericho and C.S. Kikuchi. It's an 81 here. Obviously, it being a tour show, the ratings kind of are capped. This probably would have been a little bit better had it been like a normal show or something, but we'll take an 81, though, for a tour show main event. And uh, overall, it was an 80 show. It's actually not a bad tour show, to be honest. Uh, you know, everything kind of light green besides the uh, trios match. Overall, I'm, I'm pleased with that, to be honest. That's, that's not a bad show at all. So now we go on to the final tour show, night four. And uh, then we're going on to the finals, or the finals, the final show of this tour. Which uh, will not be random Fire Pro. This will be the first time in a hot minute we, we won't be running Fire Pro for the show. I just felt like we've, um, I don't want to go too much overboard with using Fire Pro. I know we use it a lot with the series, but sometimes you want to take a break 
pump the brakes a little bit and make it a little special, you know, so that's, that's the plan there. So yeah, on to night four, here we go. Alrighty, the final tour show here is uh, Brad Armstrong and Hideki Hozaka. So this is just mainly to give uh, both Armstrong and, and Hozaka just on the card and on the tour, but really for Brad Armstrong to get a win. And really, this you could say this is basically an enhancement match as uh, he gets the win, though, in, in uh, eight minutes of the side rush and leg sweep. Yeah, we really didn't care about the rating there, but a 71 is uh, that did better than this as uh, Kuda Dakamanor Fujita. Losing to Kyoshi Demora in Shinjiro Otani as Otani with the Koka Clutch in 16-14. I mean, TTS got booked a lot on this tour for not even being on the final show. Shows you just how great those guys are. As uh, the world-class tag team in Terry Boy and Yoshiro Tajiri. As Jado and Ghetto beating the Tajiri Terry Boy team with Ghetto getting the submission victory with the Ghetto Clutch in 10-26. This was the Steel Show matchup, which... Did not steal the show. Uh, not even close. <laughs> so 80, though, for the 8-man tag between Legend and the Lords of the Deep. That's actually a crazy little 8-man. As uh, Jusha Thunder Liger beating Prince Makeup with the Shooting Star Press. Which, uh, yeah, hell of a win for Legend. Obviously, the much better team. Because uh, Prince Mako and Super Delpho were in the 50s. And, hell, Naniwa was even in the 60s. Which, uh, everybody on the Legend team was much better than... As far as uh, even um, Sasuke's injury, you know, which he, that strained rotator cuff, that sucks. Because he's going to be dealing with that for a couple of m months. So that, that's just difficult for him to deal with. But he's still at least is, is, uh, in the mid-70s or low 70s. So that's not too terrible for him. But obviously not to the level that he's used to. But our, uh, as far as main event, Cosmic Dragon Kings, Radical Revolution, Trios match. It's a 90 here. Uh, obviously, you know, taking... Basically, the two matches we're seeing on that final show in the one with this trios match. And uh, Wild Pegasus actually was one of the worst guys in the match. That's kind of crazy. As he uh, seemed off his game. But Super Astro gets the win with the Astro Scissors over Dean Malenko. So getting a win. Going into the Junior Boy title matchup. Some great momentum building for him. And a great main event for a good little show because of that main event. Because the rest of the card, eh, not so great. But we knew we were going to have a great main event so we could get away with it. And uh, so for the final show, uh, we're going to go back to kind of what we traditionally would like to do when that's, uh, you know, open up the show with, uh, or, you know, click on the little seeing if there's any backstage instance or anything like that. And then just going through the booking stage that way, uh, because obviously we're not going to do uh, Fire Pro as far as any simulation there. So just to kind of get us back to the old days there as a yeah, on to the Super Explosion show we go. Alrighty, as the Super Explosion Show, we are here in the Tokyo Dome for this show, obviously, as, uh, yeah, with DirecTV and Nippon TV, because this should be a hell of a show. And so, uh, actually, let's do a motivational speech, why not? Yeah, I got the crowd buzzing. Which, I guess we didn't need to do it, because maybe this backstage incident will help. Oh, it's just a wrestler's course, I'm glad we did that. As, uh, Sinchi was brought from wrestler's court, keeps making a mess backstage and not cleaning it up. Yep, that sounds like something that piece of shit would do, as, uh, the judge, Dean Malenko, found him guilty of that one, since a Clean up in the bike tricks after the show. Listen, maybe, uh... It sucks, because we don't... I mean, we do have some shooters in there. Because I, I, that we definitely... If he's trying to get out of line, then sh he'll definitely get fucked up. Like, <laughs> we got some people that will fuck him up and stretch him. So that I'm glad we're, we're trying to keep him in that type of environment, for sure. As, uh... Yeah, obviously... Uh, so I just want to make sure that, uh... Yeah, because we'll definitely be selling out the dome. Oh, yeah. Is that we don't think we have the national stadium yet? We should though, because uh, the Olympics would have just happened. Let's um, let's see. Yeah, about to say, oh my hundred thousand. Whew. That's a, I mean, that's a lofty goal, but I don't think we're getting there yet. Ah, yet. I think the economy and the industry's got to be booming a little bit for us to be doing that. I mean, we could run it, but it, it just, it'd be a little empty. It'd be like 75% capacity. But yeah, I mean, Eddie and Super Astro, obviously the main event, which Eddie will win. I think a lot of people probably saw this coming at once we said that we weren't going to run this in Fire Pro. But, uh, you know, as far as, I don't know why I clicked on, <laughs> on the titles, uh, the match history. As far as, yeah, obviously... During the Best Super Juniors, that was night uh, one. Yeah, but say that kicked off the, the tournament as it was an 84. 
The J Cup of last year saw Eddie beat them, and then the Best of the Juniors on night two in 2000. So every year they've had at least one match. But, I mean, yeah, sure, they didn't have one in uh, 99, now I'm looking at it. Singles-wise, not even in uh, UJPW, or, yeah, as far as, but they had a couple in 98, though, so I guess to make up for it. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to believe, yeah, even back uh, when he was still Black Tiger 2, they had a singles match. So, dating back to 1996 with this one. Pretty cool, pretty cool, but, yeah, Eddie's gonna get the win. 23 minutes is, um, maybe a little too short. We'll see. We might change that. Then the uh, co-main event, Blonde Bombers and Tsuyoshi Kuchi and Koji Kanemoto, which uh, they will also retain 20 minutes for this one. Yeah, we're definitely going to add some, some time to some of these main events and co-main events as uh, they will win and successfully retain their belts there. Then the uh, Wild Pegasus Steam Malenko matchup against Ultimo Dragon and Golden King, which Steam Malenko is going to beat the Golden King there in 20 minutes. Yeah, another one that we'll definitely be wanting to add time. Now, this match I'm a little nervous about because we have an injury. I accidentally had Tainted and Decisive. Yeah, we'll go ahead and change that. But yeah, Liger's going to beat Naniwa. Sasuke's injury is kind of the only big hiccup with, with that one. And that's another 20-minute matchup. And then we have uh, Los Bravano, Dark Side Defiance, uh, which is the Steeler Show matchup. Sikos is going to beat Sabu. Los Bravano should be the best team. Shouldn't really be close. We'll see, though. Uh, but yeah, Los Pavano will be getting the victory first time meeting there as far as the 8-man tag goes. And Dr. Wagner Jr. in Skyda, which we didn't even book Skyda on this tour, or Dr. Wagner Jr., so that's kind of hilarious. Uh, but yeah, they've never had a match against each other or anything, singles-wise, um, or tag-wise against each other. They've obviously been a part of uh, Team Mexico back in 2000, but that's it. We probably could have done... I like a tag match to build this up. Like Ray and Skyda against White Wagner Jr. And maybe Blue Demon Jr. Or even Octagon or someone like that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, as far as the match goes, it uh, it should go over pretty well. But we definitely want to add, let's make that 27 minutes. Let's make this 20, let's make that 21 minutes. Let's actually give this tag match more time. And that's kind of weird. We'll make that 23 minutes. And yeah, uh, yeah, we should be good to go as far as the six night or the six night, the six match show here for Super Explosion. Which of course now, as far as going into the next episode, uh, we'll be seeing the Jacob. So that's going to be exciting to to see how that plays out. Of course, the one night tournament, and uh, we'll also be seeing. I think, um, I think uh, you know for the. I'm trying to think of what I want for, like, a co-main or something to, to really, you know, give give it something. You know, give it a little bit of a, of a jolt. But it's tough, you know. I, I We have such a deep roster that we could probably figure something out. But also, I think we we might even bring somebody or, you know, a team down or you know, have, like, um, like Brett and, and Owen, like, have a tag match or something. Or have Owen show up and have a singles match with somebody yeah, just a, an idea to bring some people down from uh, UJPW just to give it a little bit more extra jolt to it but uh, I mean this should be a good show though let's uh, let's run it so an 83 for the opener oh they don't uh, as far as Skyda with his uh, he's still rusty but Dr. Wagner Jr. with a great performance gets to win the set out scoop slam driver in 1737 kind of a sold out Tokyo Dome the 79 for Los Pafano and Darkseid Defiance. It definitely would have thought this would, would have done better than the opener. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, Sabu with a 58. Not great there. Really, everybody... Well, Damien with a 72. I thought that would be better. La Parker is almost in the 60s. It's kind of weird. He's improving. Uh, Sikosis, though, and, and Vampiro, Darkseid, uh, Hayabusa. Like, those guys were definitely the heavy lifters of this one. But Sikosis gets the win, though, with a guillotine leg drop in 10 minutes. At 89... For Liger and Sasuke against Naniwa and Akira Kodakumi. A point difference between these two teams. Kind of crazy. Obviously would have been way, way more on the legend side had you know, Sasuke been 100%. But it's a good match though. And uh, Liger gets the win with the Shooting Star Press in 20 minutes. A 99 for Wild Pegasus Demolingo against the Golden King and Ultimo Dragon. A hell of a matchup here. 
Dean Malenko with the Texas Cloverleaf in 2257. Just an incredible tag match there. It's probably going to be better than the fucking tag team title matchup. It was close, though. A 94 as, uh, Ken, as uh, Kochi Kanemoto with the moonsault over Chris Candido. It's a great performance from Candido and um, and Jericho. Really, everybody besides Candido in the 90s. So that was, that was great to see. Jericho finally in the 90s, though. It took us long enough for him to be built up to this level. He finally is, and that's great to see, though. Um, and now, as far as our main event, Eddie Guerrero, Super Astro. Boy, Eddie Guerrero. Wild. Wild, wild. Only get a 77. As he gets the win, though. And that's his first defense during this reign here. As a brainbuster victory for Eddie Guerrero in 2648. Tough break, though, on, on the... Uh, man, just sucks it. It's off his game. So that could have been even better. Could have been even better. But, man, tag team match of a Dean Malingo Wild Pegasus, you know, against the Ultimo Dragon and, and Wild and, uh, and Golden King, rather. Incredible stuff. Definitely want to put those guys over. They were great. And, um, man, I'm just trying to think who else. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we should put over Astro. Yeah, but probably Astro. He definitely saved the show, so we'll definitely give him a lot of praise for sure because if he wasn't on that level as well, boy, this show would have struggled. Um, but that was a, a great, great job by Astro. Man, he, he put on a great performance. Which actually, you know, the Cosmic Dragon Kings, they did a much better job than Radical Revolution because of that. And we got the Super Power Series going on for UJPW. But that will do it, though, for this episode of Super Max 64. Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for the J-Cup. Take care, everyone.